Thanks for listening to the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast, where each week we talk about a free piece or two of technology that you can use in your classroom. I'm your host, Shanna Martin. I'm a middle school teacher, technology coach, and personalized learning coordinator for my district. And I'm a producer slash husband, <laughs> Fuzz. Hey. Hello. Episode 71. Yeah. We are here. It is very fall-like. It is. It is blustery outside. It is very blustery. As we're recording this, the neighbors are having a bonfire on with 20 mile an hour winds. Yeah, it's a which little Which is a dad makes me ner- <laughs> <laughs> nervous. But hey, you do you as long as you don't do that. me by burning down the house. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. It's in the direction heading towards their house. What are the odds? Well, um, it's not been very dry around here, so that's good. Yes, that is good. But uh, I hope there's lots of watering cans. Cool. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a blustery, blustery evening here in Wisconsin. <laughs> and um, a little chilly. Mm-hmm. Made some chili. We did. See? We did. <laughs> so this week, um, it's going to be kind of a short one. There's some tools that I... My students have used and quite actually quite a bit in my classroom lately. And I was like, hey, I've never actually talked about those. So here we are. It is a like an audio recording kind of week. Okay. Um, I have kids use it for projects that they're working on in my classroom. There's always a lot of projects going on. But um, they could do kind of podcasts. It could be used as presentations. There's just different ways to use them. We'll kind of talk about some of those ways. Um, but yeah, so that's our, that's a little topic this week. You've been doing a lot of recording here in the closet. I have been doing a lot of, <laughs> a lot of commercials. <laughs> yes, I've, our, I've turned our walk-in closet into a little recording studio. So since I'm working from home, I brought <laughs> our, uh, we have like a remote microphone setup that's different than what we do for this podcast it's a little bit higher quality mm-hmm. and it's well <laughs> I, I, if you want me to buy no, more no. microphones i, I will microphones. buy new nope. microphones <laughs> nope. thank you i know just everybody excuse. listening nope. you heard she said i can buy new technology <laughs> no, we're good um no but i'm i have a, a little stand-up studio in the walk-in <laughs> closet because that's if if you're ever going to record a podcast and you're looking for a quiet place that's not your piece. That is that will have really good um, acoustics. Typically, a closet that you can fit in will mm-hmm. keep the sound from echoing and getting different kind of. It's all those hoodies. <laughs> it is. It is all those hoodies. Um, the sometimes when we're out, like we'll be at a trade show. Remember when people used to go places? There were these things called trade shows. <laughs> and they would have really bad coffee and dry pastries, yeah. and it was amazing. Yes. Anything to have bad coffee and a dry pastry. Exactly. <laughs> and well, and so the um, hmm. sometimes when I'd be at a show, they'd be like, All right, we, uh, Fuzz, we need you to record an uh, opener for this video or record this um, sponsor line or something. And a lot of times what we'd do is we'd find a, a sweatshirt or a coat, and we'd throw it over my head. <laughs> and that way it kind of like in a pinch makes a sound you barrier know, barrier it's not soundproof <laughs> it's not top quality and sometimes you can like hear the sweatshirt hear rubbing. The, like, 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 <laughs> <laughs> um but the uh, nice. uh but, but if you're works. if you're looking to record mm-hmm. or you're looking for a place to to do something like that i would recommend a walk-in closet with lots of clothes on it there you go Yes. Laundry and all. Laundry and all. Perfect. Well, so, cool. Well, that might work with these little tools we yeah. have today. Or build a tent out of blankets in your living room. <laughs> there you go. Keep it interesting. <laughs> so, our first site today um, is called SpeakPipe, S P E A K P I P E dot com. And this is a very straightforward voice recorder. So, you click start recording. You record it, it listens to it, and then it gives you the link to your recording. Um, it, there's a five-minute limit on this one. But my students use this all of the time. Mm-hmm. If they're doing a recording, I'll, we'll do a lot of recordings in my class, um, especially now because we have some um, in-class and some virtual. 
That way they can do presentations without video. I mean, we use a lot of things, you know, like Flipgrid and Wakelet has some cool things where they can, it actually connects with Flipgrid now, puts a video right in. But some kids want to do like an announcement or Mm -hmm. um, they want to talk about their projects without being on video. And you don't have to download anything. They don't have to, They you can sign up and like sign in so it saves your stuff. But it's very, just very easy to use. And um, for example, I had a student, we did Wisconsin history projects where they got to choose an event or a place or a person, not yeah. a person, or a Thing. invention. And presented to research it and present and everything. And one of my kids was like, hey, can I just... Can I make kind of like a like a mock like an announcement kind of uh, like like audio kind mm-hmm. of like not a podcast but just can I just like teach you about my topic and I was like sure and he sat there and taught me all about it and was recording himself and then he's like and then I made another one because I really liked it the <laughs> first time he's like and it's so easy and I was like cool. And I've had students use SpeakPike before um, for voice recordings just to share out information, especially because mm-hmm. then they can email it to each other, which is kind of fun sometimes. I use Google Classroom all the time to post information, but sometimes you just want a little audio. And while there's a lot of different apps we use, um, this is one website that's just very useful um, for kids to jump in and record themselves. And they like to send little audio messages out to the other kids who are not in the classroom. Um and there's just fun ways to use it. So speak pipe, very easy to use. Um, so you literally click the start recording button. It will record what you are saying. Um, max five minutes when you're done recording, you hit stop. It goes, here's your recording. You can either reset it or save on their server. You can put the name in there and save it. Um, and then boom, it's like saved to their little server. And then you have the link to it. And you can drop that message, that link in anywhere that you need to share it. So that's it. Like all set, ready to go. So it does up to five minutes? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, and a lot of times, like if I'm doing, um, if kids aren't doing big project, five minutes is a long time to be talking. Yeah. Especially if they're presenting a topic. So I kind of like that there's a time limit on this one because five minutes is plenty. Yeah. um, Because there is a paid version too where they Mm -hmm. have more pieces. but Yeah, but this is just very... And if you're going to ever go with a paid version, I wouldn't recommend SpeedPipe because there are some other ones that are cheaper per month that are uh, yeah, there's more things much, to it. much more time and yeah, better bells and whistles. But for, for the straight for free, up freebie, yeah, five minutes of cool. free talking, yes. Also, something that's kind of cool is you can add this link. So if you're a QR code person, if you have a kid, like let's say they've done like a cool project or... um done some images or some if mm-hmm. they've created something and they want to share it out what you can do is if you're a qr person put a qr code on it and then use the speak pike link as the qr code and then it can be the kid talking about the project when it's oh, displayed yeah. that's so cool idea. not that we have visitors coming to our schools at all right now oh, but man. we've in the past on it where there's like a qr code and then you could pull it up and then the kid is the student is describing their project that's on the wall yeah. and then you get that's the great. whole background of it, which is kind of cool. Yeah. So there's lots of ways that you can use SpeakPipe because again, it's this version of the free version in five minutes. You never you know, use yeah. that much talking, but yeah. So that's our first freebie today. Hooray, hooray. Hooray, hooray. The second one, I know a lot of educators have started, I don't know if they've started using it, but I've heard them talk about it more often. Mm-hmm. And I've had a couple students be really interested in like testing out podcasting, um, especially with their their projects in my class, because I kind of let them present the information however they choose to um, after their research is done. And it's called Anchor FM. Mm-hmm. So A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M. And it's, again, very easy to use. Um, you sign yourself up. You create your own little account. And, um, like go through and you can like make your first episode. You click, yeah, let's do it. You can record straight onto the computer. Um, when you're done recording, you can go through, um, and then they have like your little library. So all your little recordings are kept in your library 
It also connects to your Spotify account. So if you want to add music into your podcast or mm-hmm. your recording, you can add music into there. Um, and then there's even a little space for like messages and then transitions. So you can, um, they have, they have little transitions that you can like drop in, like, you know, one, two, three second kind of deal. Um, click save your episode and then you type it up, you put in your title, you can put in your description and click publish now, and you can have your whole little podcast set up ready to go, which is pretty cool. A couple of things. I would definitely use it with older students just because it does like create a real podcast, right, a real yeah, recording. Yeah. But if you want to, you can save it all. You can go through and have the students just record and save it um, if they're going to have and practice things. So if you don't want it all out in the open, um, you can have students record and keep it uh, within their library mm-hmm. and like kind of house all of their stuff together without publishing it. So that's another option too. Um but it's cool. There's just, there's so many ways that kids can record. They can create podcasts about things they're interested in. They can find, you know, a students to connect to. They can create, you know, different issues they mm-hmm. want to discuss and, and you can distribute it. You don't have to. Um, but if you, as a teacher want to create a podcast, this would be an easy way to set it up. Um, if you want to set something up for your students where you're podcasting to like teach your students or connect to your community or other teachers, um, you can even set up monetization if you really want to. <laughs> um, so it's cool. It Anchor, reminds me, uh, well, it's, it's pretty close to uh, Spreaker in terms of, mm-hmm. uh, but it looks like it actually has some um, more features that you can do to make your um, uh, podcast content creation a little bit better than some of the other tools on on Spreaker, so they have. Uh, to me, this one's just very. It's very user friendly. Like mm-hmm. the way it, the layout of it is very like click here, do yeah. here. You're not hunting for stuff. It just. And you can do uh, blocks of audio segments and click and drag them around with their episode builder. It looks uh, uh actually now that I'm looking at it, I'm kind of considering switching my other uh, podcast <laughs> over to this because it's free. It's um, free. but they also have transcriptions, which is cool. Yes, it's very important. Yeah. So, uh, really neat. Anchor.fm. Yeah. Wow. There you go. FM. We're on oh, the I mean, I've heard of Anchor before. I just had never played around with it until mm-hmm. this wonderful podcast Look told me to. See? And I happened to be on the podcast at the time that I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> and we've played around with it. I've just never talked about it, which is kind of funny. I forget. Like, I... I have this like long list of things I talk about on the podcast, mm-hmm. and then I have stuff that I do in my classroom. And sometimes I'm like, "Oh hey, we've been using that for a while now. Yeah, never actually talked about it, but hey, mm-hmm. we should share it with others." Yeah. So yeah, so just a few little audio things this week. But I know the kids are, my students at least, are finding other ways to connect. Um, some of them get a little burnt out from being on video. Um, mm-hmm. So it's another way for them to share information and you can hear their voices um, and just another mm-hmm. way for them to create and share information, which to me is very important. Yeah. Well, I can't wait till uh, this podcast is over because I'm going to go buy those new microphones. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> no. Nice try, though. Oh. Good luck with that. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> this has been the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast. If you ever have any questions, you can find me on Twitter at SmartNWI. And if you want to get more information on the links to the technology discussed in this episode, visit SmartNWI.com or join us on Facebook. New episodes each week. Thanks for listening. Go educate and innovate. The ideas and opinions expressed in this podcast and the Smart and WI website are those of the author, Shanna Martin, and not of her employer. Prior to using any of the technologies discussed in this podcast, please consult with your employer regulations. This podcast offers no guarantee that the tools we've discussed will work for you as we've described, but we hope they do. And we'll talk to you again soon on the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast.